Stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can we have a roll call, please? Thayer, absent. Bamberger, I'm sorry, Bamberg. No, just Bamberg. Bamberg. Yeah, I'm here. Bill Lyon. Here. Hoffman. Here. Fletcher. Here. McNally. Here. Turnbull. Here. Flaker. Here. Townsend. Here. And Baker. Here. <coughs> changes to the uh, agenda in new business. We're going to add items two, three, four, and five. Item number two is the Miss Bridgeport Fest Scholarship Program. Item number three is the old BNS building. There's a request. Uh, item number four is a Bridge Fest donation. And item number five is a uh, MDOT meeting. We'll update you with some information on that. Are there any other changes to the agenda? Sure. Three. There's a request in the old BNS building. And four is a, uh, the Bridge Fest donation that we look at each year. You are correct. We did not have a meeting after that. We had one later on. Okay. I don't know if that matters or not, but... Was there any event that took place not in the meeting? say that um, we should just change that a discussion was held regarding, the meeting? regarding a meeting yes okay. to discuss those things there which is what I would do once, public comments twice, public comments three times, that closes public comments, let's move on to new, new business, historical bridge landscape, and I think you should have in front of you the uh, quotes, Steve, would you bring us up current on this? Sure, I got a hold of... Um three landscaping companies. The 
first one that you're looking at is uh, pretty reputable. Um, cable, landscaping, they're in the free one. When, before I go over this, when um, you asked me to get the quotes, Ruth Ann and I walked down to the bridge area. We met with all three landscaping companies at the same time. So when you look at all of these, everything is apples for apples. Um, nothing deviates from one to the other. Kind of told them what we were looking for. Um, and I kind of went off that bid that um, Reliable gave us when Darrell contacted him last year. Cable landscaping came in at $3,657.50. I think I highlighted that on your sheets. Reliable uh, Lawn and Landscape, um, who has done work here in Bridgeport, came in at $3,825. And Absolute Landscape, again out of the Freeland area, Saginaw, came in at $38.35. So I thought these were pretty good. Um, One's within $10 of each other. And then the other one is $180 um, difference. Why is the total cost you have written on there different from the total on the quote? Because there's two sheets for Cabal landscaping. We've got 3219 and then their second sheet where they're going to do the uh, topsoil, repair two areas of the lawn that would be over by. So I added those together. Okay. Reliables is all on one sheet. <clears throat> and Absolute did the same thing. They have um, the two yards of topsoil, grade and seed, remove asphalt from land that's in the BNS area and stuff like that um, to kind of get that to some green, uh, green grass in some of those areas. So I added those together. Do you have a recommendation? I don't. Um, I know cable landscaping very, very well. I know absolute landscaping very well. And I know reliable very well. Um, I, would, I would not like to recommend anybody on this. My son is in landscaping also. And he knows all three of these guys. Um, I would like the board to select. The only thing I can say is that reliable. And John, I want to compliment you. They're down there. I've been down there to the rock area in the last couple days. I, I want to. They're down there right now. They're down there now. Um, they're doing an outstanding job. That area is so beautiful. And um, thank you for what you've done for that, keeping that every year. But getting back to these, I would say they're all they're all reliable, and I would hesitate to work with any of the three. We didn't have one in Bridgeport. With no, there is nobody in Bridgeport. Um, well, there's a new one that just moved in, I believe, but this was after I got the quotes. Uh, Travis Govine, I believe, uh, I, he is no longer in business. And um, there's another one that uses a Bridgeport address. I believe they're out of Saginaw, Opie's Landscaping. And I didn't think that was too reliable, so I didn't go there. I have a suggestion. I know Reliable is a couple hundred dollars more, and you said they're very good, but they are on a birch run, which is in our same, we're in Chamber of Commerce with them. Well, not only that, um, for a number of years, they've kept that up beautifully down there. Not that others can, but that's a, that's a known factor that, are, that they do an excellent We have history with us. We have the history with it of them doing the one down here and they do an excellent job. That's not to say the others wouldn't, but and probably you could talk them into doing it a little bit cheaper. <laughs> well, they're here, they can just drive down and do this one, so they'll save on the gas. <laughs> Again, that's kind of why I commented and thanked John for what he's done down there. They're doing an outstanding job, and I agree with you. I would think that they're familiar with Bridgeport. I, John, I believe his name is John. Yes. Okay. Every time I've met with John, he's been great. Um, I would have no problem working with Reliable. At one point, um, we kind of forgot, I think, about 
we talked about it when it was snow on the ground, but it's that little area behind the municipal parking lot. Right. Mm -hmm. Did we include that? Yes, that is included here in the bid. The little pond thing? What yeah, do you call uh, that? Yes, we all the Ranger. Right Thank you. Yeah. So um, actually, included? when Ruth Ann and I were down there, you've got a lot of um, perennials that grow up in there. They're going to clean all them big old things out of there that look like weeds and stuff. They're also, when I was down there, when they submitted these bids three weeks ago or whatever, the parking lot, um, every time they come out, I want them to blow that parking lot. There was lots of stuff in the parking lot. Uh, get the stones out of there. There was papers in there. There was a bunch of junk in there. So that's part of it. And they are going to clean that. I call it a weed, uh, a bed uh, down there, Karen, where, where we're talking, where all those perennials, they're going to clean all that up and go in there, take all that dead stuff out of there that, and remove all that. And so that'll uh, come back with, right exactly. Yeah. And that's part of this bid. Okay. So I'd like to make a motion that we accept the bid from Reliable for the season 2014. I was just going to say, because I hadn't seen this before, but reading Reliables and reading cables just quickly, this Reliable appears a little more extensive. They are. As, as, as to what, what they're going to do. 180 some dollars difference. Yeah. Extensive. I'm sorry, what? Oh, extensive. extensive. Oh, extensive. I'm sorry. I'm not okay. Now, now we have discussions that are more expensive. It yes. <laughs> it extensive. Is, it is more expensive. Extensive. We have extensive. We have, we've had, uh, we have experience with them. And like I said before, there was Bert Run, who was part of our chamber. I, I, mean, I highly we recommend it. place in Bridgeport, which is a <coughs> Okay. And it appears they're going to do more. <laughs> I'll keep telling them to in, keep enhancing. We have a motion for accepting the quote from Reliable. Any further discussion? Roberta, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That concludes uh, new business item number one. Let's go into new business item number two. Steve? All of you received um, a request for the Miss Bridge Fest scholarship program. I was pretty actively involved with this last year. Actually, I was one of the judges. Um, to crown the new Miss, the first Miss Bridge Best. Um, Stephanie Pop is the vice president of the Miss Bridge Best. There are different um, organizations, I would say, in the state. Some are closed and some are open. <coughs> this is an open um, program that. If you're from Birch Run, Frankenmuth, wherever, you can represent and try out for this. Um, they are affiliated with the Miss American organization. The girl that we crowned last year, I believe she was from Linwood. Um, Stephanie, I can't remember her last name. Um, I think, uh, Cameron, okay, Cameron. Um, there are a lot of girls there. <laughs> She will be representing um, Miss Bridge Fest um, from Bridgeport, Michigan at the uh, next level, which will be Miss Michigan. They're asking for $2,100 to fund the scholarships. I believe there were three girls from Bridgeport High School that actually did try out for this uh, crown. It's amazing what these girls go through. And, and, um, I highly recommend that we keep this program alive here at Bridgeport. I really see it growing. I really see um, our young youth, particularly women, having an opportunity to better themselves and go on um, 
for our title as Miss Michigan and Miss America. Could I, I, I agree to this if we can, but did you check to see if this was something that falls under the guidelines of the DMV? Um, I did not. I just assumed that um, it's an activity in Bridgeport, just like the Bridge Fest would be an activity. But I did not. I think it does based on that, but I would really have to look into it. I fall under the category of host and support uh, special events in the community. That's what you're saying, I think so. I think so, yeah. I assume you did, I just, yeah. What, uh, what budget category is that? Um, I didn't bring my budget sheet in. I think it's in your, you, on your five-year, isn't there an item that says uh, on your five-year plan and the list oh, of projects? Know. It would go under... Um, Promotion and marketing, 117. <coughs> Karen, do you have your love notes with you? No. Okay. Uh, Jamie has I was just looking to see where we put um, what the education well, under 967-002 is marketing and promotion. If you look at our love note stuff here, I call it love notes, the Bridge Fest money comes out of that. I would think it would be the 967-002. I could talk to Tammy and make sure that we do get it in the right category. And every time we do pay out... 967-002 is Bridge Maintenance. No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, what's what's... Nine seventy one. Oh, 971.002. Oh, yeah, it does say bridge maintenance here. I think 971.002. But it would be, it would fall under the marketing and promotion, Jim, you're right, 971.117. Request. You, you have that in front of you. Um, it's whatever that you want to. Last year we gave $4,000. Um, if you look under fireworks sponsor, see where it says $3,000 sold out? That You can cross that sold out out of there. That sponsor did not come through. They're looking at both nights now with fireworks, and the fireworks are going to cost $6,000. What they're requesting is $4,000, same as we gave them last year. Looking at the budget, I don't think we budgeted um, that total of $6,000, but do we have the money for it? Um, yes, we do. We're looking at the Miss Bridge, Miss Bridge Fest scholarship program and the Bridge Fest donation to the same Bridgeport or Bridge Fest event, correct? No, they're two separate things. Totally separate. The, the Miss Bridge Fest. The scholarship program is new. Correct. Right. That, yeah, last year was the first year. 
and that took place in the winter. I believe it was in January. It was in January. That will be coming up this January. So they're two separate things. And that would fall under that line item, uh, same thing of nine, of 117 there. And every time you guys give a donation, what I'm having Tammy do is put it in the, in the right category. And then I'm also taking those love notes and I'm listing it next to that on my computer so that I know that when we do our budget in September, that was this, this is what we gave all this money for. So that we don't go back, that's kind of Eric started that and I'm following through with that. Because when we said in those meetings, well, what did we get, what, what, where did that go, what did we do? Discussing both the uh, new business item number two and business number four. And I think that Karen's question was do we want to increase the total expenditure for Bridge Fest to $6,100? Scholarship program. Let's have a uh, roll call vote. Daryl absent. Bamberg. 
Yeah. Yes. Go by. I wish we could break that up a little bit more to distribute it to more people. I don't want to pay them any scholarships like that, though. Okay. Not only, if I could say one thing, not only does... We're yeah, doing a vote here. Okay, no, we're done with discussion? Hmm. Okay. In the middle of a vote, we... Okay. Wait for me, yes. Hoffman? Yes. Badger? Can I just explain my, why I voted no? Sure. I don't. I don't think we have to give the. I didn't think we had to give the whole twenty one hundred. I would have you know, brought up a motion for fifteen hundred or something like that. But since it, we couldn't change it after we started voting. Can I defend my no? No. <laughs> I'd rather give to the scholarship of the high school than the because those are our people more than I feel this. Does the Bridgefest scholarship program in any way promote the bridge? Well, I, yeah, I think it promotes the bridge and Bridgeport, and that's why I kind of stopped when Ron was, not only are, are we giving a, a $2,100 to some local talent and outside talent too, they do represent Bridgeport, but also that day, um, I think it might be even a two-day event, it brings a lot of families into the area and lodging and uh, eating and that type of stuff. So you're not just looking at giving $2,100. I think the community is going to kind of benefit a little bit off of it. But we don't always have to give the full amount that's requested. You don't. If I may, um, once the motion is made during discussion, everybody's free to. It's item number two on the new business. Let's go to item number three, the old VNS building, Steve. Um, I, I've had two calls so far. Um, one, um, very promising. The other, um, I would not do it. Um, I've had a lady call to, actually she called Bill herself. Um, and, and then we had another call. Sherry Baird, Beard, her last, her maiden name was Pettinger. She is a Bridgeport, um, she's no longer living in Bridgeport. She lives on the outskirts, but she did go to Bridgeport High School. Um, she's lived in Bridgeport most all her life. She owned Sherry's Alterations, um, where Greg Light is right now. She was there for six years. She currently works for Becky Clark at Wash King as their alterations seamstress lady. She would like to branch back out and go back into her business. She has called to see if we would like to lease that property to her. I did talk to her um, quite extensively. Um, <coughs> I know Tanya and I are planning on putting an ABC package together of what we're actually going to do with the building. I did receive the keys today from Bill, yes. so we have everything um, now from Bill. Uh, they have everything cleaned up and out of there. Um, 
I told her that um, I would present this to the board. She's willing to pay $400 a month. I told her I would not go over a one-year lease, depending on what we want to do. I don't want to get tied up into a two, three, five-year lease, and then we can't do something with that property. Um, and then she would pay all utilities. I also checked with Ron in the zoning and um, department, and uh, even though there's not a lot of parking there, um, they can park kind of in the front there. We could have them park at the um, the new parking lot, and I believe you guys can park two or three cars down there anyway. So I, we don't think that they're going to have her car and probably another car. Um, so it meets it meets the requirements from the planning and zone or from the zoning. Um, and I told her that we're not sure exactly what we're going to do with the building, that I would present this to the board to see if we wanted to lease it. Um, if we don't lease it, we're scheduled to shut the water off. We're gonna have the water shut off. And um, probably Rose and myself and Ruth Ann will probably go down there inspect the building now that we've got everything done, get the um, utilities. I believe those are already turned over into our name. I've tried, I think you have the call. Okay, I'll, I'll do that then. Um, but that's where we're at right now. She did have a business, like I said, in Bridgeport for six years. Are we interested in leasing that property for a year and making about $5,000? We don't have to pay taxes, um, but I told her I can't make that decision, only the board can. Is she acceptable for a new? Pardon? Is she acceptable to do it? Yes. Yes. How about six months? Don't we want to do something that quicker than a year? I think we do, but again, we go back to. Um, we're going to be going into closed session to talk about something today for a very short time. Um, I'm watching the money um, and the budget. So if we're going to do something with that, then we're going to actually have to probably get a committee together. Tanya and I um, are going to get together and you know either tear down that property, uh, take it back into, there's people on Facebook saying it should come back to the original or uh, gas station type look um, you know we I'm not going to make those total decisions but when people want to maybe have some ideas I think I'll have a couple forums and we'll kind of talk to some people and Tanya and I will give some recommendations and stuff like that but remember we're going to have if we take it down we're going to have some cost involved and we got to take the, the barn the garage down in the back, that all has to be taken down. We could be looking at seven, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. I don't know. But that's why we bought it. That's why we bought it. Yes. Not, not to lease it. Right. Um, we bought it to have the property. Can we even be in the business of leasing equipment? Or leasing equipment? Yeah, we'd have to find that's out. A, that's, a, that's a for profit, for profit thing. sort of consensus we came up with that when we purchased property the goal was to make the decision quickly so that we didn't run into some repeat situations and I, I think that it would be not to our best benefit five thousand well, dollars and the headache and the insurance if we we have to insure it yeah. and then we have to have them have renters insurance I don't think it's worth the headache well we're insuring it anyway so, you know, we're carrying liability on that property if somebody walks through there and stumbles by the bridge. I just bridge, feel it's, it's a poor move to tie it up for a year. Well, that's a decision that the board has to uh, make, and that's what I told her, that I can't make that. My recommendation probably, too, is to let us move forward and do the plans that we think we're going to do. But when somebody, and that's why this is on the agenda now, is because I just got approached yesterday. And anytime I'm approached about something, I have to bring it to the board. Thanks 
Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Our job to maybe find her an alternate if we're not interested in saying completely no, but I don't think it's yeah. really our position to um, uh, occupy that building for a year because that was never our intent. I have an alternate for her, um, but again, I look out the DDA's interests before I look out for anybody's interests uh, when it comes to something like that. So <laughs> I just like. Well, we got a vote now. We spent most of the time on the floor. From my notes that I took with her, too, she would like to get in by July 1st. So she would give Becky a two week notice that now takes it to June. And I told her um, if the board did approve this, we would probably waive June if she wants to go in there, paint it inside, freshen it up, do all that at her expense. And then her <coughs> rent would start in July is what her and I came up with. So it doesn't give us, getting back to Augie's, it doesn't give us much time to, I, I need to let her know, I think, yay or nay. second person, I wouldn't even recommend it to the board. If I wouldn't do it for myself, I don't think I'd do it to the board. It's not strong. Oh, I thought that was an alternate for her. Um, oh, yeah, oh, an alternate? I thought you meant the alternate second person. Yeah. If we lose her. Um, I could do that. In fact, I don't have any problem. Daryl has bought the chamber building, and I know he's been working on the chamber building, fixing it up be a great place for right there too, I think. So, Mr. Block's got some space across the street. So there are places that she can lease and stuff like that. I just don't think she's in a position to pay. I said, what is the maximum you can pay? She says 400 with utilities. Probably gonna cost her 500. But there are alternatives, which is good.
Mr. Baker. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. I will get a hold of her then and let her know the outcome. Thank you. That concludes new business item number three. Let's move on to new business item number four. The uh, Bridgefest donation the request for $4,000, which is what we gave the last two years or three years. We gave it last year, I know that. And we had some discussion. The, the premium sponsor, what does the premium sponsor get in terms of recognition? Uh, your names will be, well, a lot of their printing and stuff is already done for this year, but they'll do as much for this because June's coming up. But next year, uh, any printed material, any banners, anything that pertains to the Bridge Fest will have the DDAs um, sponsored by Bridgeport DDA. We sponsored them that much last year, right? We did give them that last so year. So we should have been on this every year this year then. Right? I don't go to their meetings, so I, I don't know. I just asked that question, too. Yeah, because like with the golf tournament I sponsored, I couldn't be on until next year. They'll put me on next year because the banners are already done. So we yeah. should have been on this year's for the 4000 Well, I don't know if we actually, we just made a donation last year, and I think, what were you going to say? I believe this is the first year that they're doing this. Yes, it is. This See, is new for them. They made a donation last year. They didn't have all of these premium sponsors and all this kind of stuff. You are correct. And that's why nothing was printed for this year. And then next year, we would be the, if you do the premium, the DDA would be the main sponsor of Bridgefest. I recall. Enhance our $1,900. Wait, wait, can I back? So I, I, I think I misunderstood what you said. You're saying give them, you don't have any problem giving them $4,000, but then them give you $2,000 for the petting zoo? No. 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 What, what are you saying? We could give them their money. The petting zoo, I believe, was, was, it was under $2,000 from the petting zoo. I just thought if we put a banner out there, which the banner would cost two hundred dollars, so check into that. <laughs> you know, just a small banner saying sponsored by the Bridgeport DDA, and put our coloring books at the petting zoo, which is a good spot for them. And get our name out there showing that we're doing things, but we could still give them whatever we decide. And then they the take sponsor. the two, they take the, the two hundred dollars and buy the banner and stuff. Donate, right? Either that, or we can buy the banner and have the banner for when we sponsor other things. I, I read their minutes this morning. Um, had an email. I, I thought I saw it on my phone, but apparently not. <clears throat> and I believe it was something like it was eight hundred dollars this year for the petting zoo because they're going to get so many different out of Freeland, and they're going to be there two days, then Sunday. Saturday and Sunday, and what was it? Like from 10 until 2, and then the other, the other day was 1 until 5, or you know, something like that. So I don't think this year is going to be the full blown petting zoo like we had previously. 
And again, I'm just reading the, the minutes that they sent. So I think, but I've been I'm pretty sure the amount was eight hundred dollars. What they're going to have to pay, and it's out of free money. So. And so district something going to wait to yeah. give them more I agree. than that. But so why don't we say that we'll um, contribute 1700 with the hope that we can gain sponsorship to the Penny Zoo to display our coloring books and use the additional 200 to purchase the banner that says we support. And then they can keep the change of what they don't need for the petting zoo for just the donation. I'm a little lost on that. I'm, I'm what, what, she, what she's after is somewhere on the lot that when we give this money, there's a big banner out there that says the DDA I, supported. That's what she's after. I what understand doesn't matter the amount of money. I understand what she's asking. To me, that's two separate items. If the Bridge Fest is asking for whatever amount you give them, you should vote on that. If you're in charge of the petting zoo or something, you need to come to the DDA and ask for the other $200 and not give them that and then get the $200. That, that's too confusing. And we're you need to them. request. We're just, giving them something. We're just asking for something in return. Right. But you're asking them to spend money out of the Bridge Fest Midi dollars that they went around and got. Absolutely no. not. No. I think the DDA no. should purchase I'm understanding. a little banner, and it'll be our little banner. So that, that's a different request. That's not a request, that's an offer. We were just chatting. <laughs> the suggestion is that we get a sign. Yeah. Made for in, us. Sponsored by the DDA. Give them thousand dollars and I will need eight hundred to pay off the things so that's okay because the rest of the thing keep as a donation for the bridge fest program just like we've been spending money for them in the past. Absolutely. So did, I, did I understand you correctly earlier they were asking for four thousand to go towards the fireworks? Yes they're asking for four thousand to go towards the fireworks. So what she's just saying is if we give them the $4,000, just have a big banner saying DDA sponsored the fireworks. You know, that's all she's saying. Is that whatever we give them, we get something on the banner that says the DDA did it. I only came up with the petting zoo because we had purchased the coloring books to give out of the bridge pass, and I thought it would be a good spot to put them, saying that the petting zoo was sponsored by the DDA with our coloring books all together. I like they can use it for whatever they want. I like the coloring book con concept because, first of all, we have them and we put them for the kids in this community. But we need places to distribute those. Well, we so, should have done the Easter egg. I'm, I'm sure if somebody goes to a, a bridge fest meeting, they'll be more than happy to pass up the coloring book. They just want to look for somebody to pass up. I guess I'm uncomfortable doing 2100 and I know that it's two different topics and then an additional 4000 So in my opinion, I would not grant the request for $4,000. So we... Well, I think we... Tanya is in agreement with me. We're talking two different things here, folks. Yeah. We need to, we need to vote on okay. this here and then if the DDA is going to give $200 for a banner and not go to them and say, well, we're going to give you 2000 In return, you've got to give us, you got to go buy us a banner. All right, so we'll it's vote on be, this. Right, Tony? I think so. Yes. And, and then I, we'll vote on purchasing <coughs> the banner. I wouldn't want to see the money that you guys give. This is my opinion, that you guys give and you put the stipulation on them that they have to buy a banner. I think that they're going to recognize you in whatever manner they have. I don't think that they intend to get money and not recognize anybody. I think there's probably a recognition program. I think we don't know what that is, but it would be, I mean, maybe we need to find out. <coughs> I'm sure there's something, but to take the money you're giving them for something and then say that you you have to do this. Um, put the stipulation 
Yeah, so I, I just, the money is for the better good. It's a, it's a great event. Um, I would like to make a motion that we give $4,000 to the Great Fest Committee for the Fireworks. Is there a second? If, if we keep giving this money away, if a business comes in here that wants something or needs something to help get going, do we have money to give them? Yes. Yes. At that time, yes, we have money, and at that time, we'll approach it. At, yeah. Well, I understand. I just want to make sure we got money. If a customer, if somebody comes in and wants to start a business, they need help for something, we're going to be able to step in and say we can do this. We'll take a look at it. But we but got money to do it. We have money in our okay. belt. Yes. And I got no problem. I'll second the motion. We got the fireworks. I would make a motion. What's that? That would make a motion. Well, I'm just saying, if somebody needs 8, 10, 12 grand for a business that's something else with water or something, that we get the money to help them. That's all I want to make sure. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. Discussion? Now, if we want to go with a lesser amount, is this when I would amend that motion? Yes. Well, I'd like to amend the motion to give $2,500 to I'd second that motion. I don't think it's the last to ask for a payment to put in front of the public well, for a donation. It's a donation so we can buy the banner. Discussion on a second motion. Do you know what we're doing here, Jamie? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's call the call the question on the second motion for twenty five twenty five hundred dollars. No more discussion. I, I have a question. JJ Morgan used to come in here and ask for a donation toward. I think we gave him that two years in a row. Mm -hmm. And maybe he came back and gave us some money back once. I don't believe that. Okay. Something is ringing a bell. Something like that. Huh? Something I think if you, if you look at it too from that perspective, a few years ago, and, and I thought 20 some years ago, you'd have a big one like we do now. But this one is much bigger than it was and it didn't really work that well two or three years ago, four years ago. And we now have a tremendous group of people who have put a lot of time into this and it's all donated time and they've built this up to something that's really nice and it's really something good for Bridgeport and I think we should do whatever we can to support them. you 100 percent Augie except and, and Steve you keep saying we have plenty of money but we do have committed expenses um, and I don't know where all of this money is going to come I mean we have a reserve I'm sure but we do have to be responsible with our money too I think on the done on the financial report don't we go <coughs> committed funds and then we show fund balance mm -hmm. like they do in the township. 
So if you've got committed funds, then those are not going to reflect in, in the fund balance. But on our budget, on our budget, we have commitments. <coughs> we have commitments so, in the budget, to, such as yes. the. Yes. I'm just asking the question. I know, but such as the transfers out to police officer, the bond payment, we do we do have commitments. I understand. And well, if you guys look at your budget, this. We go up fiscal year January through December. Uh, we're coming into June. Our budget is three hundred and thirty-four thousand. Of that, we have spent um, one hundred and eight thousand. Is that right? No, I'm sorry. We've spent um, two hundred twenty-four thousand, which we knew. So we have one hundred and eight thousand left. But I just have the other, a, just the other way around. Steve. Well, that's what I thought. The other way around. We, we've no, only. This is the your total revenues, your total expenditures, and that's the net. That's your revenues minus your expenditures. Is the one way. Your revenues are three hundred thirty. That's right. We, your expenditures are two twenty four. No, available balance is still two hundred twenty four thousand. Okay. We've only. I have. Yeah. We've spent one hundred eight thousand because I looked at this the other day. If you look at your total ex. Um, Available balance, right at the end. Year to date balance. No, it's the year to date balance. No, right? I did that right. Oh, well, what is this here? Your year to date. But your, this is your budget. This is your year to date balance. Yeah, you're right. We spent 109. We spent 109. We spent 100 revenues. Correct. We still have 224,000. Yeah, so right. it looks like we're going to come in. At budget or a little bit. Uh, well, yeah, but but Steve, eighty-five thousand is just the bond. And I know. That's not taken out of the budget. Police officer has been taken out of the budget. Right. I mean, that's that's uh, that's one hundred and forty-five thousand of that two hundred and twenty-four that's left, roughly. On my balance sheet. Um, if I look at my balance sheet and my budget, we would be about $120,000 to the plus if we come in um, with this with this budget right now. Is all the revenue in for this year? Yes. This is this is cash. And this is the taxes. I thought that's just how we just pay. But that those tax monies are going on. Well, we're probably going to go over over some budget, which I think we knew that. Uh, but we do have we have money coming in. They said in June, and we're currently at four hundred fifty-eight thousand dollars in the bank and certificate of deposits. And so we have about five hundred six thousand dollars in in assets right now. There's four hundred fifty-eight thousand in cash in the bank. That's the number I watch along with this budget over here. And what we have to do at the end of the year is we have to move some of the monies around between the various accounts. Correct. So the it, does, just the same as the township does. Our goal is to spend the same amount. Yeah, or less. That's all I'm saying. I don't know what we don't have a copy of no, the right. sheet. Right. I don't and then, and then you're I'm not saying we need to build up, but 
I don't think we need a million dollar budget because the purpose of money is to do things for the community that the benefit the town of development district. So I mean, we're not down to our last penny. We've got lots of pennies and nickels and dimes in there. And our, our committed uh, you know, non-motorized trail money, 15,000 sitting there. <coughs> the maintenance on the bridge, 11.5 is sitting there. Village Square, 5,000 is sitting there. So those committed funds, they roll over every single year. That money is there. Yeah, but that money is committed. And committed, cannot be spent. right, cannot be spent, but it's, it's committed for when those <coughs> projects come up, that we wouldn't have to take out of. Right. right. But I think one of the things that has me worried is we've already committed the um, 12 for the lights, for the Christmas lights. Mm -hmm. We just did 12 for pots. In the watering program, we did 30 something, 100 possibly for the historical society. And if I look at this current picture we have, and ten thousand dollars for beautification. Oh yes. Yep. Don't, don't forget yep. that. Thank you. Um, we have to feel more comfortable. So. Each one of those things you list are positive things for the downtown development area. And any of the things that we, it's a good thing that we're doing. But we have to remember we've got to get credit for those. And if we just are still supportive but not as requested for this bridge fest, we're not doing a disservice to the community. Say that again. Well, all of those things go in our brownie bucket, if you will. And if we're only giving 2500 instead of 4000 we're still doing a lot It's still a good community. thing. It's still a good thing. No. One of, the, one of the reasons the Township Supervisor sits on this board is to bring to us things that are going on in the community and what we might do to make sure that the message gets out about the value that residents have or visitors have for being here. So I'm, I'm looking at the township supervisor is suggesting that we look at the four thousand dollars. We have a vote within within a motion to reduce that to twenty five hundred. Is there any further discussion on that motion? Let's call that motion then. the $2,500 amount for the bridge fest. Mayor Edson, Bamberg. I don't know yet. A yes gets you to reduce the $2,500 and no leaves the original motion that we haven't voted on yet stand at 4000 A yes does what? Reduces the amount to 2500 Uh, five to four, they get twenty-five hundred dollars. <throat> okay, well now we're back to the other motion. That is there for four thousand dollars? No, I think you're done. <clears throat> okay. If it would have been turned down, then you missed it. the other way. Right. Okay. That concludes uh, new business, item number four. Let's move on to item number five, uh, the MDOT meeting. Yeah, uh, just for you guys' information, Rose and I have been, at, um, we'll be attending a meeting in Bay City next Tuesday from nine to one, it's a four hour meeting. That's with Jason Garza. 
that is for the MDOT project that will be taking place 2015 and 2016. Um, so we've had a meeting already here with MDOT. I believe John attended that meeting too, and Roberta, I think, attended that. So now the meetings are really going to start. Construction is going to be right around January, February, and it'll go for two years, 2015 and 2016. I just wanted to let you know we're, we're, that is that ball is starting to roll. We're going to be attending that meeting. Any questions on that situation? That concludes uh, new business number five. Let's move on to old business. Uh, can you um, just, I'm going to have time to update you on that. Um, the grants have been submitted. Uh, we're still waiting on surveying and doing a couple other things. Right. The, the, the grants were submitted April 1st. Uh, we did have a response back on some things that we've got to update, so we'll take care of that on both grants. As far as the property swap goes, um, we're just, we were waiting for the water level to go down. It finally did. So we've got that scheduled. I'm not sure what the last two days of rain did to that water level, but as long as the water level stays down, we can get in there and set the irons and then finish that up with John. I think that's it. I don't think anybody has questions. Okay. Any more on the canoe lunch? No. Uh, can you update, update us on the snow removal and the sidewalk situation? Nothing since our last meeting. No update. Any questions for Steve on that? Okay, let's go to old business item number three. PDA beautification, flowers and flags. Um, the flowers have all been ordered through Ablis. They're planning on putting them out 521, which is next Wednesday, or 522 Thursday. Birch Runs is going out on 523. All of this is weather permitting. And Ablis will bring them all over on a big flatbed trailer. I'm going to drive the township vehicle with the light on it, and two guys are going to go um, and spread them out in this, the location where they're supposed to go. So weather permitting, those will be um, out next week. As far I'm sorry? Somebody should take pictures. Yeah. I'm going to get the Herald out there too, doing kind of an article. As far as the flags, uh, we got some bad news from Consumers Energy. Um, we cannot put out flags on telephone poles. Um, it's a new ordinance that they have. And, um, but we can put out banners similar to this banner right here, similar to what they have in Birch Run. Um, there is a cost and a pretty big thing we have to go through with consumers. To put one banner out, $55 per poll. Um, we then have to pay $8 to, for attachment, $20. It's ungodly, Ruth Ann and I went through this. Um, to put one flag out uh, with the cost that I got with the banners, um, I got two, two companies. One was uh, given to me by Roberta, um, and theirs was $112, and then I have another one from another company was $125. To hang one single banner like this on a pole, we're looking at about $225 to $250. Ridiculous. Um, if you look at the flag thing that you got here, this is the colored one. All of you have one of these right here. This is another option that we could go. Uh, before I would order these flags, I would order one and try it. Um, this is a ground mount flag. Um, you can see the ground mount, and Ruth Ann said she, and there's a stake that goes down in the ground. She said she could probably even. Um, cement them in or get that ready mix or whatever to make it a little harder um, so it would stay up nice and sturdy. These are a 16 foot fiberglass pole, three by five flag, and the prices are there. The ground mount is 
$59.95 for the uh, pole and $8.95 for the Supreme Nylon, which that's what uh, Paul Moore uses in um, Birch Run. It's a one-time flat fee of $10, no matter what, how many you order. And so each flag would cost us $88.85. I was thinking about ordering one and seeing what it would look like um, displayed out there somewhere. Or we put it in the back back here just to kind of look at it. My recommendation with the flags is no more than six flags probably on each side of the road and intermix them. Like for example, if there was one like out by Taco Bell there, then the next one would be here, 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 here. I don't really want to junk it up. I think um, five or six flags from Bearcat down to State Road on each side of the road would look really nice. Um, Ruth Ann and I talked today. There is um, the two companies that I checked with on the banners. She's got an idea that maybe we have them come out and see what they could do with the existing brackets that are out there for the uh, snowflakes to see if we could attach one of these banners to that existing um, because she said those things, the way that they're fastened on there or whatever, they don't blow around and stuff like that. Um, that is another idea that was just brought up today. Otherwise, we don't do anything with flags or banners this year and um, we just do the flowers. We cannot put any flags on the utility pole. Don't you also have an issue of putting the flags on the right away? I um, have not checked with MDOT uh, on that between the sidewalk and the road where the uh, lower pots are going. Um, I would I would have to check into that, or we just have to put them out and see what happens. I would just put them out and see what happens. That's what my recommendation was too: is just put them out and see what happens. You would have to include in this some line of flag etiquette that you cannot fly a flag at night without it being on the back. Correct. What's that? You can't fly a flag at night without the light on it. We just ordered, we just ordered a flag with a light. My wife just did. You got, and that's what it said. You got to have a light on the flag at night. Oh boy. Whether the light above on the pole was 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 the appropriate. Well, we can't, yeah, we can't put any type of flag on the utility poles. If we go something like near, this, near the poles. then you're going to have to probably either get it near a pole or have if a There's an American flag on it. If we put a bridge, some bridge pole yeah. symbol or something, we can get away with it. The American flag has to do it. I did not know. Yeah. The snowflakes, aren't they on consumers' poles? They are. But see, that that is grandfathered in. So we're able to put our Christmas lights up for next year. Paul Moore from uh, Birch Run, they're able to put flags on their telephone poles because they were grandfathered in. No new customer can put a flag on a consumer energy pole because they've had fires and wrapped in the transformers. And I mean, I've been dealing with consumers a lot here. So what I hear you saying is if we can get a flag that works on the the equipment that we use for our lighting, then we can use the pole. It would have to be a banner type. It has to be a banner type. So it has basically yeah. two arms that are attached to, to uh -huh. the pole, and then the flag runs between it. So it's, it doesn't So it could be a banner flag. What's that? It could be a banner flag, right? It could be a banner flag. Yeah. The consumers are just anti I'm sorry, what? <laughs> They're not just anti the, uh, the two companies, the one that Roberta had me call was A1 Vinyl Signs for a 18 by 36 banner was 112.35, and then Jet Graphics out of Freeland that does banners $125. So we'd still have this cost of the banner. This included the brackets, and see, you could do something like I think Birch Run. I was there today. They have this blue one right here. I can pass it around. They have all the blue ones hanging and then they take a few of the uh, poles that already have the flag mounted and they do some flags too. But most of their town is the banner right here, which I think does look classy too. But 
I'm running out of resources and I'm running out of time and my hands are getting tied with consumers. Can we, did you get my email to call Kip at Van Ogden? Who? Kip at Van Ogden. Uh-huh. Um, he might be able to do the adjustment for us. He is an awning company. Okay. He actually used to be Heinlein awning, but okay. his parents sold it. He took over his own company. He may be able to make just what we want. Yeah, they would have, yeah, and I did not get your email, so, and I save everything. Um, he would have to come out, and they'd have to take, probably take a look at those brackets that are existing there for the snowflakes and create some type of banner for us um, with, those, with those brackets. Couldn't we just focus on our light poles that we have? We have the ones at the carpool lot at the municipal parking lot at our little stations by Chase and Fort, and then at the bridge. It would just be an introduction, right? Mm -hmm. That's four poles? No, there's probably... Yeah, the ones at the bridge, the ones at the parking lot, the one at the corner, um, at Fort, right here, and then Chase. the one down by oh, Chase Bay. But then the there's the, the carpool lot. There's, what, seven lights there? Yeah. Uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then you have the ones at the MDOT lot, however many are there. Yeah. So you'll get probably close to 15, 20. There's also a place on McGrandy, I think it's called Signature Signs, it does banners too, reasonable. Well, everybody's reasonable until you call and you get a price on them. Right. <laughs> everybody's reasonable. But I've had, I've had them bring me up some stuff too, yeah. so. Um, well, I thought our focal point was going to be from Bearcat to, to State Street with the flowers and all that kind of stuff, and then expand out later on. I don't know, should we put signs down there by the, the parking lot, or should we just focus from Bearcat there? How many poles would be in that area? I don't know. Uh, two. Two down there by the? Yeah, the one at Fort and the one at Chase Bay. Two, and then and over then here. And then the ones at the MDOT lot, probably going to be there. I, remember. I just want to do the ones up front by the MDOT lot. And you got the municipal lots in that area. But that's on uh, Williamson, not on, not on Dixie. Yeah. So you got two at the municipal lot and six at the bridge, but maybe you just want to put flags on the two closest to the road by the bridge. Why don't we just stick with the flowers this year and work on the banners for next year? I think um, with what you said, putting a flower pot like the distance of that table, that's a lot. And I think all those banners might be a little much. Have you seen the ones in The ones in Birch Run, Karen, you're right, they're hanging on their, their black poles, and they, got the, and they look really, really nice. Um, they, they look beautiful. I was there today at the chamber meeting. I agree with her. I think we got to do one thing at a time. Let's concentrate on the flowers and go from there the next time. Maybe we could do a poll every Eventually in 20 years, we'll there's going to be a minimum requirement yeah. for us. <laughs> okay, you want me to hold off on that then? How about if we were just to do one at the State Street and one at the South End? Yeah. Or one, you know, one on each side or something. So one down there and then maybe four rows on the other one? Get, just get some minimal signs out? What yeah. kind of flag are we talking about? Well, if we do something like that, I was going to probably do more of uh, not the American flag, take our, it would look like these, I'll pass these around. If we attach them to like the poles that Karen's talking about, you can put welcome and then birch run, do something like that. But they're not going to just sell you two. You got to come up with, you would have to come up with a graphic or have them come up with a graphic for you. Yeah. And make it be custom to you. And there are probably some standard ones you can buy too, but. When I was, when we were costing this out, when Ruth Ann was going to attach them to the, uh, the poles that have the lights and stuff like that, we're only, we were only looking at 17 of them. Because they did ask about the quantity and stuff like that. So, probably the lower quantity, you're right, they got to make a template and all that stuff. So, if we go with something like that. I'll get with Ruth Ann and we'll look at that and see if, if maybe we just do, like Augie's saying, four of them or five of them, whatever's down there, and at least it'll, it'll be a start and then we can expand the following year or something. So 
in the movie something else. You know, like the well from the Bridgeport sign, there, there is three poles. There's the United States flag, the Michigan flag, mm -hmm. and the Bridgeport flag. You might use that Bridgeport color at least that's out there, or when we order flags again, we change colors with that location. Okay. You know, we probably shouldn't have different color yeah. flags, you know, different color flags. United States flags are at least all the same. Right. Now, those those poles that we're talking about, those all have lights on them, they work at night and everything, right? <coughs> or, okay. You could actually have a banner like that then if it's as a flag. Mm -hmm. And they've got some really cool ones. Mm -hmm. So we could do a flag banner 18 by 36, keep it all consistent across, you know, like the American flag. There's some really cool ones in a magazine that I got. Then your uniform, or we can go welcome to Bridgeport. But how many welcome to Bridgeports do you want to have? You, you know, you, you want to have one at that end and probably one at that end, and that's it. Hmm. We'll come up with something. I think I'm just going to get the flowers out, and we'll just keep prodding away to see what we can do. Okay, we'll look at discussing this at the next okay. meeting. Includes old business number three. Let's move on to old business number four, the rock. Yeah, yeah the subcommittee met about the rock. Um, it was brought up about um, whose property it sits on, um, which is MDOT property, uh, who's paying the insurance. All of that stuff was uh, was brought up. Um, we're still working on that. The subcommittee had a meeting, and we had Norm Bamberger come to that meeting and um, explain a few things. I got a hold of Paul Moore from Birch Run uh, because it was asked how they did their program there. They have a rock out there too, it's lit up, or it's not a rock, it's, I think it, it's something there. It's uh, a slab of stone. Slab of stone, yeah. Yep. They had a county leadership program where people attended for one year and they were from all different organizations, Chamber, CBC, Birch Run, Frankenmuth. And these people went to a leadership program with an idea. And then once that program ended, they had to go out and actually um, install that. Um, theirs is on MDOT property. The permits were pulled, and the only involvement that Paul had as the DDA coordinator was he had to sign for the permits to put that there. They do all the maintenance there. Um, their insurance is covered under their general liability insurance. They did not go out and buy any more uh, insurance. It's covered under their general liability. They also have electrical there, which the village pays for that. They get a consumer bill from that. And then every time they go out to cut the grass, Paul has to get a permit with MDOT. So if they cut the grass this week, he's got to contact MDOT and get a permit. Next week, MDOT get a permit. Permit, 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 permit. Is the, what they have to follow the, uh, in Birch Run. The DDA maintains everything around it. Once a year, this group from the county leadership program comes and does like a thorough job and clean up and stuff like that. So to make a long story short, um, it was brought up, I think, at a couple of meetings ago that Karen thought that maybe the Bridgeport beautification kind of should kind of come under as a joint adventure with the DDA or the township. That's kind of how this whole rock thing got brought up. And then John had some concerns. That's why we talked to Norm. Uh, currently, it's under the beautification. They paid the insurance for it. Uh, Norm led us to believe, or me to believe anyway, that if somebody were to hit it, they're going to sue everybody. They're going to sue the township. They're going to sue the DDA. They're going to sue beautification. They're going to sue MDOT. They're going to sue whoever, um, is what kind of I got out of that meeting with Norm and stuff. Um, so the decision really has to be made. Um, and I had a meeting yesterday with Louise. Um, she was up in my office for about a half hour. and. Where I think we need to go on this thing is, is we're digging off files out of what happened here. Norm was going to get a hold of Dick Dunnall. What happens, happened. We can't change it. How can we move forward? And moving forward would be 
does the, um, I don't want to see that rock go anywhere. It's beautiful. Rose doesn't want to see that rock go anywhere. It is fantastic looking. They do a great job down there. So if we're going to fall underneath or subcommittee through the um, beautification, we could actually ensure that rock under our own general liability. I believe. Part of what Norm is doing though is trying to establish a chain, chain of custody, if you will, of that rock, mm -hmm. from how it got there. And then that, that would drive him in deciding who would be responsible to carry the insurance. Well, Norm, as far as I'm concerned, Norm's opinion is that the beautification should be uh, in charge of that insurance, okay? Um, he contacted me back. Rose has had some conversations with him. We're right back to square one, basically. Um, there was donations by the DDA. There was donations by McNally. There was donations by a lot of different people here that donated money. But it, it still comes back to the thing of, I think the only concern that any of us have, or Norm has, is who's going to carry the insurance on the thing? And either way, somebody's got to carry the insurance. And Norm's feelings are, uh, he does not want the DDA or township, I don't think, to really go that route. Am I right, Rose? Or he doesn't want to add additional exposure to the township as yeah. an insurance agent, is basically what it boils down yeah. to. But then in, in his next sentence, we'll all get sued. So, and we've increased our, remember Jim, when you and I had a meeting, we increased our liability from two million on up. So, I mean, the, the insurance is there. If somebody hits it, I don't think anybody's gonna, but if somebody falls in here, you, you, you. I think the big decision is, is do we want to work under an umbrella with the beautification? And is that kind of what you're thinking, Karen, too? Or the beautification is because it's dwindling down a little bit and we don't have enough people, younger people and stuff actively involved in beautification? Rose, do you know where we're at with, with Norm as far as he's still taking that same position, isn't he? Or whatever we decide, then whatever we decide. He passed away. Okay. Did he give his answers from Donna? Yes, he did. And that was basically what we already shared in our committee meeting. Okay. <clears throat> okay. 